Good morning class and welcome to our continuing lectures in sustainable energy technology. In the last two classes, we looked at two types of mechanical energy storage systems, namely the pumped hydro storage and compressed air energy storage system. One is using the gravitational potential energy of water, storing it in a high altitude reservoir and using it to generate electricity at times of excess demand. The other is associated with gas turbine power plants where we are using an underground cavern to storage, store excess compressed air at times of low demand to resupply it back into the combustion chamber at times of high demand so that you get excess power generated at those times. The third type of mechanical energy storage system is flywheel based energy storage systems. So, flywheel flywheel based energy storage. This is the topic we will cover in today's class. So what exactly is a flywheel? So a flywheel you can think of is a hollow circular disk. Draw it a little bit carefully. The center is R. Center is here and the radius, average radius is R. The cross sectional area of a flywheel disc is say A. So this is the cross section and it is rotating at an angular velocity of omega. So a flywheel is a rapidly rotating is a rapidly rotating thin annular disc or rim. Okay, so you have a thin annular type of a disc which is rotating very rapidly and this contraption is called a flywheel. Okay. So R here is the average radial distance of the rim with respect to the center, omega is the angular velocity. So this will be in radians per second, A is the cross-sectional area of the rim. Okay. Energy in a flywheel is being stored in terms of rotational kinetic energy of the heavy rim. So the energy is being stored in terms of the rotational kinetic energy associated with the heavy rim system. Okay. So based on basic uh, mechanical principles, the energy stored is E equals to half I omega square, where I is the moment of inertia of the rim slash disk. So, in a 
if r is the radius of this rim then the moment of inertia i is mass of the rim into r square in terms of kg meter square okay where m is mass of the flywheel rim okay so in this case then the rotational energy can also be written as r m r square omega square or you can also write this as half m r square into 2 pi n whole square which is equals to 2 pi square m r square n square where n is number of revolutions of the flywheel per second. So, it is revolutions per second or hertz. Okay. So, one revolution is 2 pi radians. So, basically your omega is 2 pi n. So, this is revolutions per second. So, 1 revolution is 2 pi radians. So, 2 pi n radians per second. Okay. So, this is in radians per second and this is hertz or revolutions per second. Okay. So, you are putting this 2 pi n here. So, you are getting 2 pi square m r square n square. Okay. So, this is the net rotational energy associated with the flywheel. Another important point here, so this equation is important, this equation is important. Another important point is what is the tensile stress of the rim? So, as we discussed in the previous, in this cross sectional area due to the rotational motion, tens centrifugal forces are acting and this is creating tensile stress on the cross sectional area of the rim. So, tensile stress in the rim cross section is sigma equals to rho omega square r square where rho is the rim material density in kg per meter cube. Okay. So, what this shows is if for a given uh, uh, density and angular velocity if the radius of the rim increases the tensile stress will increase. Similarly, a given uh, density and, uh, and radius if the angular velocity is increasing then so also the tensile stress is increasing. Similarly, if you see the rotational energy that is present in the flywheel is dependent on the mass of the rim. So, heavier the flywheel, bigger the energy that can be stored by the rotational motion of the flywheel rim. Then the average radius of the rim. So, if the average radius of the rim increases, then the energy content is increasing by the square of that radius and is also increasing due to the a number of revolutions per second. So, faster the flywheel is rotating, larger is the energy that is being stored in that flywheel system. Some advanced designs use a set of concentric flywheels. that are connected 
by a light weight elastic matrix. So the idea here is instead of one flywheel you have a set of concentric flywheels all rotating together. This is one flywheel material, another flywheel material, another flywheel material. This is R1, this is R2, this is R3 and in between this heavy material rims, so this rim has some thickness, we are showing it as a single line showing it is extremely thin type of rim system and in between we have a matrix of extremely thin elastic material which is holding the flywheels together. So this material has extremely lightweight and does not therefore contribute significantly to the flywheel uh, total flywheel weight. The majority of the flywheel weight is concentrated on this heavy rim material and in between you have this lightweight elastic matrix that is holding this entire flywheel system together and all of this together are rotating at a radial velocity of omega. Okay. So uh, here, uh, so that is another design. So we can uh, show an example of an advanced flywheel system. So in Germany, there is a facility containing a set of four identical flywheels with diameter of 1 meter and rotating with frequency of 250 hertz. So 250 revolutions are being completed by this flywheel system in one second. The flywheel rim is made of carbon fiber and they rotate in vacuum. So they are kept in a almost perfect vacuum to reduce the air resistance and air resistance cause, uh, cause frictional drag which can decrease the rotational speed supported by superconducting bearings. Total mass of these four flywheel systems is 3500 kg. It can store total 50 kilowatt hour energy and deliver it at 500 kilowatt rate of discharge. So in this system, we have a set of four identical flywheels with one meter diameter. So radius R is one, it is rotating at a frequency of 250 hertz. Okay. The flywheel rim is made of carbon fiber, we will discuss the materials of flywheel in detail and what their advantages and disadvantages are and they rotate 
in vacuum supported by superconducting bearings. So these superconducting bearings ensure that the frictional losses due to these bearings are minimized. So again, it helps in uh, uh, preventing the rotation energy being dissipated due to frictional losses. The total mass of these four flywheels is 3500 kg. So it is extremely heavy okay. and it can store around 50 kilowatt hour of energy and deliver it at 500 kilowatt rate of discharge.